With the Eagles' defensive overhaul looking like they'll lose C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Javon Hargrave, Fletcher Cox, and more, who does that put more pressure on, Howie Roseman or Jalen Hurts? Plus, we take a look at one of the most ridiculous takes I've heard in a while, saying the Eagles shouldn't keep Brandon Graham. But first, let's run it. Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Josh Davis here. Appreciate all the support. Please make sure to like and subscribe. We got a lot to get into here. So let's jump in. The most ridiculous take that I've heard in the last couple days came this morning on the WIP Morning Show. Here's the thing. This Brandon Graham thing, John, is uh, I'll use the word curious. You know, the reports are out there, and I know Howard's talked about it also, that Brandon Graham's probably coming back. And one report indicates $6 million. And it says two-year deal, meaning like you know, 12 million. Now maybe the second year they can get out of a little bit, I don't know, but basically it sounds like they're committing to Brandon Graham. And John, I remember Howie Roseman talking a number of years ago that after the Super Bowl 2017, he made a mistake of getting too attached to players. And I'm gonna put people in a really uncomfortable spot today because we love Brandon Graham. But John, I'll ask the question, is Howie making a mistake here? Is this sentimentality and attachment the wrong course of action for the 2023 yeah. and 2024 Philadelphia Eagles. I feel like an awful person saying this, but yes, uh, Howie is doing the wrong thing for this team being sentimental with Brandon Graham. And we I, we all love the guy. Yeah, we do. I, 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 like I actual love. The heck actual out of love. True, yeah, true love. Yeah. True love. Like, <laughs> I appreciate him, not just as a football player, right. but as, as a person, yeah. as an individual, as a, you know, just, just one of the best all-around people you've ever seen yet i don't think he should be on this team in 2023 and i think how we should know that you know how he has experimented in these waters in the past and it hasn't turned out the greatest just rewind one year last year fletcher cox no one really wanted him eagles fans wise yet we ponied up 14 million dollars to bring him back that's uh you know and and did that prove effective? I you know I don't even know how to answer. Now the answer is no. He wasn't anywhere close to the Fletcher Cox we thought right. he could be. You know peak Fletcher Cox, but you know maybe they're saying hey he gives you some of the leadership and the things that you really do need. Same with Brandon. Graham. And he can We're just be clear. He can carve tr- a spot out yeah. for him because he's almost like a coach at this point in his career. Yep. But when you when things are as tight as they're about to be because you're going to pay Jalen $50 million a year, you don't have the luxury to do this. Are you kidding me? Really? We don't have the luxury to do this, to bring back Brandon Graham on a team-friendly deal. Uh, Look, I get the argument. Okay, sure. There's other money that could be spent elsewhere. Maybe if you save it, oh, hey, we could keep C.J. Garner-Johnson, some of the other free agents like we've mentioned. But... This is Brandon Graham, and and like Richie kind of starts alluding to there, by the way, it's with John uh, Richie and Joe DeCamara of The Morning Show, but you guys probably saw that or picked that up from the video, but this is a guy who, this is going to be huge for your locker room culture. We're already seeing the guys that, that the Eagles are going to lose, that the names go on and on and on and on. So you need that locker room presence, especially because what we're looking and seeing like is this defense is a complete overhaul. It's going to be mostly new names and new players, and they're going to need a leader's voice in that locker room. Someone who's been there before, who, who can uh, get the, the team camaraderie built up, get that morale and everything else. And you're not going to have it for most all the other players. So if for nothing, else you need Brandon Graham in that locker room and he knows Philly and he embodies Philly and so to bring him back he was successful you're not asking him to come back and play three downs uh, or play play every single down you're asking him to come back and play probably 25 plays a game and then be that vocal leader on the defense and that's something that is extremely important and I think you can't put a price on that there's yes a relative price you don't want to overpay but I'm sorry, I don't understand this. This is the most ridiculous take that I've heard so far. I know you can save money elsewhere, but BG is giving you a team-friendly deal. It's gonna be, what, $6 million a year probably? That, to me, is worth bringing him back. Yes, I agree with the whole Fletcher Cox. You're probably going to lose him. There's no way to bring him back. But from what we've seen, if C.J. Gardner-Johnson is gone, which it's basically at this point we can write him off, Javon Hargrave is probably going to be on, gone. There's so many other names. So I think this is a, a terrible take, but let me know, know what you guys think. Are, are they right? Should we not bring back Brandon Graham, even though he wants to return? Should we not bring him back? It's probably going to be a team-friendly deal. 
Does it not make sense? Is Howie too attached to his players? We'll see. Hey, speaking of Howie being too attached to his players, look at this sneak peek preview. Uh, Jason Kelsey did an interview with Howie Roseman. I think this is fascinating. What was my scouting report? What made you guys draft me? I think we can't tell this story without really telling the story of Howard Mudd, you know, and um, yeah. we had you in the fourth round, you know? Fourth round? Yeah. Yeah. So why did I go in the? Why didn't you guys draft me in the fourth well, round? Well, honestly, I'm embarrassed that we had you in the fourth round because you're thinking the first ballot Hall of Famer. We had you in the fourth <laughs> round, so we were wrong about that. Right. And we had it because at the time, like we talked about before, like nobody at that time really looked like you. Right. No, nobody. And uh, you were converted linebacker, right? Mm -hmm. You, if I remember, you played your freshman year as a linebacker. Right? Yep. Defensive scout team player of the year. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Howard had this way about uh, very charming. I'm telling you, how this, <laughs> yeah, you know, like they what there was strong. There's, there's, Howie, I'm telling <laughs> you, we were totally excited to get you and draft you there. I can picture where I am at certain times. We were two weeks into practice, and he grabs me and he's like, he's he's starting, and I was like, yeah, great, you know. He's like, what are you thinking, you know, like week three because we have two road games. We we're playing at St. Louis at Atlanta, and he's like, mm -hmm. don't even start with me. He's starting week one. And this guy, I, I remember it, man, so clearly. He's like, this guy is going to be the captain of your team and your best player. And I went, <laughs> I went, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> But does he have to start on the road in the dome right away? <laughs> That's fantastic. And if you're not following or subscribed already, go subscribe to the New Heights podcast with Jason and Travis Kelsey. It's phenomenal content. I am so excited, looking forward to the full scope of that interview. But again, that just gives you the extra insight. Jason Kelsey is awesome. They could tell from the very beginning just about, although it's funny that they had him graded as a fourth round grade. But let's go back to the first argument when we opened up here. Does Howie get too attached to his players? Obviously, that's a different side of Howie than we've seen before. I mean, he, he's very op opening up, energetic, fun, laughing, having a great time. And, and sure, you know, it's, it's all in good fun. But at the same time, there's business decisions to be made here. Now, obviously, Howie's made it quite evident that if Jason Kelsey wants to return, he's going to make that happen. And Howie's told Jason, take as long as you need. So I think that Jason's going to return. And, and I'll be curious, and, and we brought it up on yesterday's live show ta with Thomas Mott. But there's the thought that when this episode drops that Jason maybe announces then in the episode that, hey, I'm going to be returning. We'll see. There's, there's no other rumors or reports that I've heard about that, uh, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if, hey, you save it, you drop it on the episode and, and get all these likes and views and everything else. But thumbs up for Jason Kelsey. Be sure to like the video. Talking about that locker room presence, I think that that's big. I think that Jason Kelsey is someone that you need in the, in the locker room, uh, much like Brandon Graham. So let's get the vets re-signed. Let's make sure that happens. Uh, but that's definitely what I'm in favor of. So let me know in the comments below. What, what do you guys think? Okay, moving on. Another topic of debate discussion, because again, with these free agents being gone, the question is, who's the pressure on? Is it more so on Howie Roseman to deliver or is it on Jalen Hurts? We've seen this for many teams. We've seen it with Patrick Mahomes. We've seen it with Tom Brady. We've seen it with other quarterbacks. Whenever they get success, you can't keep all of the talented players. So it's, it comes down to, you know what? The quarterback has to elevate their level of play. This is who we're building the organization around. And yes, if you're going to pay a guy close to $50 million a year, you're not going to have all the pieces that you normally would. But here's the question with what is going on now, what's transpiring and what we're beginning to see that this team's going to look like in 2023 and beyond the defense is going to be overhauled, but is there more pressure on Howie to deliver now with draft picks and free agency or does this say, hey, Jalen, guess what? We knew that you were the guy. We're about to pay you, but now you really need to be the guy. So would love to know what you guys think. Last topic here, just to kind of bring this up. And again, another question becomes, okay, free agency. We've got to target a bunch of big names, but what are we going to do? I think that there's a pump the brakes. Let's not freak out. There's plenty of time. There's good names out here. And as you see here uh, from Derek Gunn, he thinks that the Eagles are going to be fine. Look at this. The Eagles will be one of the destinations people want to come to, end quote, by Derek Gunn. So he's thinking that, you know what, and I'm, a, I'm in agreement. I, I, I think that you look at this team in the NFC, a weaker conference than the AFC, quite honestly, but you look at the team, all the pieces are there on the offense. You're going to have defensive players that are going to look at it and say, you know what, I want to win. And so we'll see who, which players and which, which uh, guys want to come over here. But I think that, you know what, this sets up for a great potential offseason or as, as good as you can get. I know you're losing big names and everything, but 
really quickly here, if you take a look at the list, let's just go down the line. We're, Fletcher Cox is probably gone. Robert Quinn, probably gone. Brandon Graham, hopefully he's back. Javon Hargrave, he's probably gone. Jason Kelsey, I think he'll be returning. James Bradbury is gone. Isaac Sayamalu is probably gone. Uh, Andre Dillard, Kazir White. I think the Eagles will keep TJ Edwards. We'll see what they can do there. But Dom Kong Sue is gone. Linval Joseph is gone. I think probably Boston Scott stays. Zach Pascal, not really sure. I think Miles Sanders is gone. Um, not sure Rick, Rick, Lovato, uh, Rick Lovato, but Chauncey Gardner Johnson's gone. Um, and then uh, Gardner Minshew's probably gone. Uh, question marks on a, on a few others, but. Uh, overall, that's 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 what that's five six starters on your defense. So again, it's a defensive overhaul. But then the question becomes, okay, so who could you get? I think safety is the biggest question because in the draft, like what we talked about, it's very deep for corner. It's deep for defensive linemen. I think you can draft some players there and and be solidified. So I wanted to take a quick look. But Pro Football Focus has their top free agents and their top safeties. So look at the list here. So there's Jesse Bates at one. I think he's going to be too pricey as Jordan Poyer and C.J. Gardner-Johnson, obviously, because the Eagles are not going to resign him. So I don't think you can take anyone, anyone who graded above C.J. Gardner-Johnson. But if you take a look, the list, if you take a look at the list below. I think that someone who in, intrigues me is Jimmy Ward. And so they talk about Ward here. Jimmy Ward, like Poyer, will come at a discount due to his age. He was forced to play the slot in 2022, but he did so at a very high level despite missing several games. In 2021, Ward ranked fifth in PFF uh, WAR while proving to be a versatile chess piece. He played the majority of his snaps at free, at free safety, but also saw significant snaps in the box and in the slot. So Yes, it, like it mentions there, he played in the slot, but I think that speaks to versatility and kind of what we saw from C.J. Gardner-Johnson. He's played the safety position, could come down and play in the slot, a little bit of corner action. So they're able to move him around on the field. I think that Jimmy Ward's someone you could, could consider. Um, would be interested to see what the Eagles do there, though. That's one name. Also, one more I wanted to bring up real quick. So Jeff Kerr of CBS mentions Tayshawn Gibson uh, could also be another name. So um, I think this is very intriguing because you take a look here, five interceptions, eight passes defended, opposing quarterbacks and 19.3 passer rating. So very productive there in terms of the statistics, but also the big important piece, he played for Sean Desai whenever Desai was a defensive coordinator with the Bears in 2021. So again, you're going to ask your defensive coordinator, what what schemes are you comfortable with? What players are you comfortable with, with and that you know? Gibson's stats speak for themselves. I think that this is a guy you could get on a, on a better deal, a better contract with his age especially, but he's also played with Desai. So again, let's pump the brakes. Let's not freak out. We're going to be okay. Lots to come. Monday is the, is the time when negotiations start happening. We'll start probably hearing and seeing big rumors and, and reports and everything else with deals being signed, but we're going to be fine. Everybody just relax a little bit. This defense is going to be okay. We're just going to have a new look defense and obviously new pieces to come around that. But appreciate you guys joining as always. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Really appreciate the support. Until next time, I'm Josh Davis and this has been the Philly Special.